Hey, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, and today I'm going to do a video about the sampler in Bitwig. Um, there's a good amount of material about the sampler, but I want to focus on what you can do with the different modes and features. So today I'm going to talk about cycles mode. Now, if you've tried using cycles, you might find it to be a little mystifying. <clears throat> it's not uh, necessarily super easy to understand what you're going to do with it. Um, so for instance, if I just take this sample and I just go ahead and drop it in, that doesn't sound too good to me. If I put it back in re-pitch mode, okay, I understand what that is, but this is a little bit weird. So. One of the first things that we're going to have to do to make samples, um, I'm sorry, to make cycles work well, uh, is to do an analysis. So if you right click on the sample, you can say detect root key, and then it's going to find out what the root key is. And all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense. Now, with cycles, it's going to work best with a sample that has a constant pitch throughout the whole sample. Um, you can, of course, use it on anything, but if you want to get something that isn't just kind of buzzy and distorted, then you want to start with some material that has a constant pitch, and then you want to match the pitch using the analysis method I just showed you. And now we can play it. So if I play it at its... Um, intended pitch here to see G3 right sounds pretty much the same the um, and if I switch it to repitch it's, it's pretty close yeah it's a little bit different there um, as we uh, change the pitch one of the main differences here is it's going to play at the exact same speed, regardless of which uh, key I press. But when I go and repitch, of course, one's going to play at a slower rate than the other. So if I go ahead and start playing chords in cycles mode. Now that doesn't sound too pleasant. Let me throw up a um, chord progression so I can just work while I... Uh, do whatever I want to do. So if I put this in repitch mode and play it, you know, it, it um, has that Mickey Mouse effect issue, and that's something that repitch can help us with, but we're going to have to massage it a bit first. So let's listen to it in cycles. Ooh. Oh my, that's, that's gross. Yeah, that's definitely not better. So let's um, keep this repitched version. I'm going to make a copy so that we can compare what we do in cycles mode. So let's go into cycles and see if we can't make the sound better. So what we're going to do here to improve the sound is we're going to use a modulator. We're going to use the um, the key track. Where is key? Oh, for some reason I have trouble seeing that. Alright, so we're going to use a key tracker. What we're going to want to do, I'm going to change the rate here to 24 to make it somewhat steeper. You don't have to do that necessarily, but I find that to be a pretty good setting. And then I want to find our root key. And see, see how this dots right here? You can see which key I'm pressing. If I just match that, then anything that we're doing will, um, will center around that key, and that's what we want. <clears throat> so let's uh, first uh, deal with the problem of the Mickey Mouse effect. So what I want to happen here is when the key goes into a higher register, I want it, the formant to come down. So I want to turn this down. And I just want to use my ears here and listen to where when it sounds pretty decent. So 
so that's that's pretty good. Um, let's listen in the lower register. If you go too low, it'll start to get a little weird. But in a decent range, it sounds pretty convincing. So again, like this is an octave above, and if I turn this off, very different, right? So let's take that, we'll go with that, but we still have the problem here if I play this. It didn't solve that hideous phasing issue. And what's happening here is that even though we're playing at different pitches, we are synchronizing our waveforms. They're, they're kind of uh, separated in the same way. Uh, so it's causing a bunch of phase issues, basically. And so what we can do is, there's several ways we could fix this issue, but the easiest is just to change the speed of um, the playback of each of these different notes, just as they would with the repitch mode. So let's go ahead and just change this up a bit and we can again do it to taste let's play back this yeah that already sounds miles better yeah we basically already killed the phasing issue just by varying the speeds of each one of these guys and using one modulator so again let's go ahead and compare that to the repitch mode Yeah, miles better. So the cycles is very helpful in taking a single sample and stretching it out and doing um, really nice sounding, uh, making nice sounding instruments with it. Uh, so if you use the key tracking in the way that I just described, you can, especially with vocals and even with instruments, uh, use them uh, polyphonically in a very convincing way. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, let me know of other things you want to know, but I'll probably do some more about how to use the sampler in um, a way that's very musical. And uh, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.